So, Larry, uh, you actually put together this plan to divide up GE into three parts. Uh, you divided off the, the health care last January, and now this is the last step uh, with GE Nivernova. Take us through that process. How did you decide that order, and what did you have to do, particularly in power, to make it ready to spin off? Well, David, if you go back five years, we really were, I think, tasked with two simple objectives. One was a significant deleveraging of our balance sheet. Secondly, we needed to execute an operational turnaround across the business, but it was particularly acute in our power segment, particularly the gas power business that, that, that Scott ran at the time. So you fast forward, we reduced our debt load by over $100 billion. Scott and the team really executed, I think, a phenomenal turn in gas power and then with the rest of our power segment. And we were sitting there as the pandemic was beginning to lift. We could see the merger of our aircraft leasing business with one of our key competitors, Aircap, coming to uh, a, a quick close. And we really had to decide what's the go forward structure for GE. And given we had had so much success with the decentralization work, given that the capital markets clearly liked the businesses but didn't like them together, it was actually an easy decision, one we took a little over two years ago to say, it'll take us a couple of years to pull this off, but when the dust settles, GE Healthcare, GE Vernova, and GE Aerospace will all be on their own bottoms. You may have just answered that in your answer, which is, why'd you pick Scott? No, not to, not to <laughs> speak in your, about your, your presence, Scott, but how'd you pick Scott? Is it because of the role he had in the turn, in turnaround? Most definitely, David. I, I met Scott back August of 18. Yes. I wasn't even in this chair yet. It was the first GE business that I had visited down in Atlanta. And I came away thinking, this is a really strong team but there's some things that we're doing that probably are working against us. So we began the pivot to focus more on the businesses as opposed to the segment. Scott was running gas power services at the time. We asked him to step up and do a big job to run all of gas power. We knew that was job one with respect to the overall operational turnaround at GE. And he and the team, I think, executed near flawlessly through that, and then he picked up additional responsibility with the rest of the power segment, and then in turn, the renewables businesses. And at each step of the way, Scott stepped up, delivered, built teams that, that did the same. So when it came time to think about the next CEO for this business as a public entity, Scott was an easy choice. So Scott, now you've got the big job. Uh, I suspect even if it was flawless, to use uh, Larry's term, it was not all that easy to do that turnaround. What in your experience in GE and specifically in that turnaround really do you think prepares you for this big new role? Well, I mean, GE has always been a great laboratory to learn and experiment, and we've always had great people. But I think over the last five to five and a half years, really the lean operating system that we've been implementing and really started with gas, right, right. in 19, where we were on a monthly cadence with Larry <laughs> and really focusing a team that always had great ambition but did we really have an ability to focus on the critical few customer KPIs every day while also protecting for the long-term breakthroughs? And the ability to multitask those things, our teams weren't always great with. And that's really a lot of what we were focused on in 19 into 20 together, is to build that rhythm that we could prioritize what mattered most to get the short term right, but not at the expense of also investing for the long term. And that's a lot of what we worked on in gas power right. together in, in 19. And that was really foundational for gas power. And it's really what we've been extrapolating across the rest of Vernova. So as you take over this new role, uh, tell me what the opportunities you see. And break it down, if you would, between two categories. One is the one you just talked about operationally, your lean approach and what that does. Really more opportunities to really drive that further. And how much of it's just a rising tide with energy transition? We are excited about the markets that and, and where they're going. And there are a lot of examples of that today. You know, data centers in the U.S., it represented 2% of the load growth in 2020. Many people think it could be 8% by 2030. It's just an illustration that our customers see more demand today than they've seen yesterday, at the same time that we need to continue to decarbonize the electric power system in totality. So there clearly are opportunities for us to serve this market 
while simultaneously we continue to run the businesses better. So talk about that decarbonization, because I did notice it's electrification and decarbonization. It's both of them. It's not either or. How much of this is just business and how much of this is actually sustainability? Well, sustainability really is at the heart of everything we're doing. And for us, we define sustainability as the complement of both together, keeping the lights on while decreasing the carbon intensity of the install base every day. And it'd be wonderful if we could wave a magic wand and have no carbon. But the reality is that's not the world we live in. So how do we sustainably electrify the world while making it cleaner every day? They really go together. And to do that, it really does require a complement of technologies. And that's where Vernova is somewhat unique because we've got the power generation technologies with things like gas, nuclear, wind. But we also play across the grid at both moving electrons, orchestrating the grid, and the system's becoming more complicated. And our ability to serve our customers with all of those solutions gives us a unique vantage point. 